back. In New Orleans, they hire former 49ers passing game coordinator Clint Kubiak to be the offensive coordinator. Ben, I hated watching the Saints offense on film last year. It was one of the least enjoyable parts of the weekly prep. How do we feel about a 49ers offshoot offense maybe under Clint Kubiak coming here with Derek Carr still as a quarterback? And some exciting pass catchers that I like. Yeah. Uh, some players overall there that I, I generally appreciate at, at the wide receiver position. Um, I, I don't know, man. Again, I just have such like a bad taste in my mouth about this offense overall. How much of that was Pete Carmichael? How much of that is just Derek Carr, Dennis Allen, and what remains there? Heck yeah, man. I like a, a lot. You could have put me in this job, and I think it would have been a better offense in terms of play calling than uh, than, than it was last year. Clint, like Clint's, kind of just bounced around the the Kubiak Shanahan conjoined family tree, and understandably so. Look at the last name. Uh, I, I have no reason to believe that he's going to like Mike McDaniel the offense. Well, you know, reinvent sure. everything. But at the same time, if you had brought up me on and said Texans hire Bobby Slowick, Ben, what do you think? I would have said I have no reason to believe he's going to Mike McDaniel the offense, and he didn't. But he sure freaking helped it. Uh, and so, like, it, it, it's a Shanahan hire. We should expect that that they run an offense that, like we know works in the NFL, right? The recipe's written down. We know that we know the quantities. We know how long to cook this thing. Like it. This will work. This will taste good. I, I I don't think it's gonna suddenly jump to be like a top ten unit. I don't think that Carr is aggressive enough for that to happen. I don't think Carr's just That's a good point. Yeah. Talented enough, good enough at quarterbacking at this point. I think that he's kind of just a, a, a middle tier guy that's gonna be lifted up uh, by the nature of this offense. But I think it's great for Chris Olave, who I think is gonna get a lot more easy targets, a lot more targets in space than he's enjoyed over his first couple of years. I think. Like Rashid Shaheed, I think, plays a good role in this. I think it's good for like an A.T. Perry, right? And and mm, start using yeah. the big guy over the middle of the field a little bit more. Um, running game wise, I think that, that they can they can see a big jump if they get offensive line health. Which I think is good for like a Kendra Miller as they kind of transition into their after Alvin Kamara era. Uh, so there's there's like a lot of like you said, like you say talented uh, Saints skill position players that I'm excited to see in an offense that's run with more intention and that knows how to get some really like easy targets for guys. Uh, not least among which is definitely Olave. Like Olave, Olave is more well known for than London is, but I don't think people realize like just how ridiculously talented Chris Olave is. Um, and I think that this offense can help him out quite a bit. So good hire uh, again. A rock would have been a good hire, but good hire. <laughs> yeah, I mean Ben Solak himself could have come in there and run a, a better offense. Yeah, per we're ben running, we're running the single wing. We would have been all right, brother. <laughs> But no, I I love easy targets. That that's what we need for these receivers. I mean, I, I posted about this at some point during the regular season, but like simply the amount of slant routes and other layup routes that Chris Olave has run through the first two years of his career is absurdly low. If you look back at like reception perception history, and I've been doing this since 2014 now, which is crazy, by the way. Uh, like it's just absurd how little layup routes, how few layup routes they gave him in that offense. That's going to change simply just by the design of it. And I like that you mentioned A.T. Perry, too, and, and sort of the Bobby Slowick and, and Houston Texans of it all. I don't have the same opi high opinion of A.T. Perry. I like A.T. Perry, but I had a very, very high opinion of Nico Collins prior to 2023. Yes, and seeing seeing him run those like big in-breaking routes as the X receiver on that offense was perfect. I wonder if we could see something similar with A.T. Perry there. So that's a good kind of deeper sleeper to keep in I mind. Yeah, to me, it's all the summer podcast for pro propping up Nico Collins last year. The people didn't know. Oh, we did. knew. Other people didn't we know. Knew, we knew, baby. <laughs> I mean, we we knew. Like, yeah, he was everybody's little favorite sleeper uh, in, in fantasy coming mm. into 2023. Go back and find the 21 receipts on Nico Collins from my account, okay? Like, yeah, and, and I love the way he was uh, activated in this offense. And yeah, A.T. Perry, just, it's kind of got me thinking, I wonder if there could be sort of maybe a similar vision there. But really, to me, it's its all about Chris Olave. Like, if, if you, Clint Kubiak, can figure out Chris Olave and like how to get him, some, not, and he should, shoot, it shouldn't even be that hard to figure out. Guy gets open all the time. Let's get him the ball on some...